Hello. Digital multimeters are a cool tool to have on you. I use them for testing all sorts of things, but I'll be perfectly honest, nine times out of 10, I'm testing the voltage of a battery. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get that functionality in something small that you can carry in your wallet or personal survival kit without having to lug around this big, bulky item. Things we'll need to make our free or nearly free battery tester. A ruler, some scissors, some clear tape, some aluminum foil, dead battery, some good batteries to test. C and D cell, or I'm using this upsizer to simulate them, and a razor knife. I'll be using my Mac 2 razor knife. So I'll cut to the chase. Your dead battery has to be a specific one. Duracell Quantum. Uh, it has this thing in it called a power check meter. Have you seen these? You press this button and this button and watch what happens in the middle. It tells you the voltage. Green is good, yellow is dying, red is pretty much dead. So what we're going to do is extract this out of this battery and make it into a little portable wallet sized device. So what we do is we take a razor knife. I'll be using my portable Mac 2 razor knife, which I keep on my keychain, or any razor blade will do. And what we're going to do is slit the side of this. And we're not being careful to slit the part that we want. We're going to unwrap that later. Whoa. I came dangerously close to where you don't want to be. Let's see if we can unwrap this. I just cut my fingernails, so unfortunately this is going to be a little harder than I think normally it would be. So you take your either dead battery or mine actually still was uh, charged up and slit it far away from the power check area. And that's because you want to get it to this point where you can peel it all as one smooth layer. Now you peel it away, slowly. That's what you want. Okay, for the balance, instead of the razor knife, which I suppose you could use, instead I'm going to switch to scissors. And basically you want to cut away this red rectangle. I don't think this has any functionality, this little tab here, so I'm going to slice right through it. So there we go. That's the intact module. There are three little metal contact points at the bottom. Hopefully you get all three, but I think it has functionality even if you only get one. And the other metal contact point is that little dot right there. So now let's turn this into a universal battery checker. So let me tidy up some of this dirt. Now we need the clear tape and the aluminum foil. You want it to be just a little bit thinner than this rectangle. We'll cut it to size later on, but for now I'm just taking a three or four inches and folding it in half once. And now I'm folding it in half again, smoothing it with the back of my fingernail. It's not important that it's perfectly shiny, but uh, you want it to be smooth and clean. Okay, now we're ready to make it. Basically, the strength of the body is going to be from the tape, and all we're doing is adding an aluminum extension to that little dot so that it can 
be touch any battery size up here. So I'm going to fold this in half again. So I'm taking roughly a six inch strip. First we put this part on. Then the aluminum foil over the top. And the aluminum foil has to go over that dot. Now I'm going to trim off the side with these scissors. Now here's why you wanted to have the D size battery. You zoom out a bit. It's because we want to be sure that when this touches the bottom part, that the top part, so you hold it with your fingers. Your finger holds the bottom here, and then your top goes like that. So the battery tester needs to be this length. I'm doing this on camera, sorry if I'm not. So that tells us that's how long the battery tester needs to be. So this side is just aluminum foil, but this side has the backing of the clear tape. And we're pretty much done. Let's give it a go. So now let's test it on the original size it came from, a AA battery, but it will also work with AAA. Touch those little metal contacts, at least one of them, to the bottom. Touch the metal strip up top. Press the button, and let's see how it goes. It's good. So there we go. It worked. And now to make it wallet size, you simply fold it in half. So let's make sure it'll also work with a even D size battery. I'm going to use this battery simulator. So that would turn it into a C cell. And this is a D cell. So let's test this D cell. So I'm holding it with my fingers and now pressing the button. It's good. So as you see, this will test any size battery, including the original one it came from. Duracell Quantum, of course, come in different sizes. I bought this 12-pack at my local supermarket, uh, but you can also buy them online. Also, before when I said you had to have a D-size battery to test, I see now that the length is really just, of the extension, is really just the length of the product itself. So you don't really need a D-size battery to test the length. Just make your extension part uh, the length of the red rectangle that you cut out of the AA battery. So now you're ready to fold it in half and stick it in all your kits. You could stick it in, for instance, the vinyl credit card holder of your wallet. Uh, you could stick it into one of your uh, sort of all-in-one multi-tools multi like that device or a wallet ninja inside your wallet. I notice it even fits inside remotes themselves. Uh, there's some danger though. Whenever you introduce aluminum foil inside a remote, there's a potential for uh, shorting. For instance, if somebody spilled a drink at a party on your remote, the aluminum foil could cause a short and you could actually potentially have a fire or deplete the battery. So it's hard for me to recommend putting aluminum foil in your remotes. Oh, one more thing. You know those videos where I show taking a Tic Tac box or the new smaller variety that's about the size of a 9-volt battery and turning it into things such as a little keychain kit for your uh, 
keychain for stealth applications or a little baby survival kit. This guy's got a little compass in it. Another application that I showed is using AAA batteries in them or AA batteries as a holder. And you know what? You could fit one of the battery testers into the product. And for instance, on this glow fob that I made, you could build a little switch on top so that you could turn it on or off. So you could actually use this as a battery checker slash storage medium for your keychain. A little bit weak, but still good to go.